okay I thought I'd just uh, show you how um, I get on with restoring phones I've got hundreds or have had hundreds of these 500 series telephones um, they're, they're getting quite low now but this is actually although it looks terrible it's actually quite a nice going to be quite a nice example it doesn't look like it's um, been painted or anything like that so um, I think it's going to be a nice one um, they're beautiful beautiful phones they're very very well made um, originally from about 19 the late 1940s right the way through to um, the 1990s in some cases and um, Americans are still using these as an everyday phone themselves even now um, they're fantastically well built the the um, the bell is absolutely beautiful um, really really nice and, and uh, I'll, I'll let you hear this one running once it's finished so um, without further ado I just think I'll get stuck into it and see how we get on okay you'll see the problems as I as I come across them I mean there always are problems with phones so let's see what happens okay These cords are certainly going to need a good clean, um, although I think they'll come out OK, um, but they really are quite dirty. But um, I don't think there'll be a problem. It says on here, reason for returning set, ticked, set replaced, no trouble. And that's, that's quite good. So hopefully there wasn't a fault when it was um, taken out of service, which is always nice. If there was, we'd just fix it. But I mean... It's nice to know that there probably won't be a problem with this one. OK, there we have it. Let's just have a quick check of the case. Look for the corners especially, that's where the cracking will be if there is any thing. This one looks like it's going to be fine, although very often you don't find the problems until you've actually polished it, polished it up and spent a load of time on them. Um, it may well have been factory painted, um, but I'm not certain. I think it may well have been, but it's very well done. Now then, um, this is this will be interesting. I'm going to take the um, the dial off, not in the recommended way, by putting a pin in this little hole, because 99 times out of 100, it doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know why, it, but it never does. So the way I do it is is I shall show you. I have done a video on this in the past, so you can have a look through.
Okay, didn't look that easy, but uh, it's a hell of a lot easier than trying to put a pin through that hole and it never works. Um, I'm sure some people will disagree with me and say it works every time, but I've done th hundreds of them and uh, they drive you nutty. Note my lovely mug. Um, I had these made up and uh, I've sold a hell of a lot of them actually, so they seem to be quite popular. Okay. Basically, I'm just taking it apart to give it a good clean and um, give it a, probably a brush out and um, make sure that there's nothing untoward. They're very simple to convert um, to work as a pulse dialing telephone. But to be honest with you, with the modern systems, um, most people are going to want to have um, a pulse to tone unit. And I can tell you that is quite a faff. Um, I charge £40 to do it. And I think if you're going to do it at home after you've bought the kit, you will regret it because it's hard work. And I've done it many, many times, so I know what I'm doing. But if you've never done it before, you could get very stuck trying to do it. So let's remove the um, handset cord. Little clip there which comes out. We won't actually be using that method. Well, I, I might do, I'll probably use a clip, but I'll use an extra method as well to make sure it's secure. Um, Looks pretty skanky, as you can see, but you'll be amazed. I think that will come out OK. What I would say is I'm not wearing gloves. Um, I don't like wearing gloves, but um, I would I would recommend that anyone else did. I will sanitise my hands very thoroughly before I do anything um, with food or anything like that, because obviously these have been stored in places where, you know, all sorts of things could have could have been you know with them so just be aware of that when you're doing it yourself now then let's have a look dial seems to still be rotating beautifully so that's all good now to get the ringer to work on a, on today's system you're really going to want to set this switch to the um, least tension so there's usually a little um, thing like this that, that that makes the switch makes this um, either more solid or or less so I'm going to put it to the next level your one might be slightly different but you'll just see get it to the least tension this is all adjustable which is very nice so you've got a loud and soft and as you can see that just moves the bell forward and closer to this clapper okay now let's just get rid of the um, existing wiring. I'm using a big screwdriver here. I don't really need to, but you'd be surprised. These are very often so tight that they would actually snap your small screwdriver. So to save me spending a load of money on Amazon, buying a new set of screwdrivers every time, I tend to use a really big chunky one because I have broken many a screwdriver doing these. Sometimes they're just seized on as solid as you like. <clears throat> Again, this has got another one of these little clips, which I won't be using on when I redo it. I'll be putting a cable tie on ours. I don't have these clips and I can't actually remove this because it will snap off once I've taken it out of position. And a cable tie does the job perfectly. Okay. 
Okay, so now we have our parts here. I'm just looking at this one. Yeah, you see this this one was factory painted. As you can see, it was um, a lovely rare blue one. Um, that's one of the one of the most rare colours and very sought after. So uh, I'm going to have to be very careful when I'm cleaning and polishing this because I'm not going to be repainting it. It's going to be, um, as you might say, shabby chic when it's been done. It will look beautiful, but it will have a little tiny touch of blue coming through, which I'm not going to do anything about. Um, this was factory painted probably in the 1990s or 1980s. The actual phone itself was made in, let's have a look, 1976, made in Canada. This is the same model that was used in the US as well, I believe. Um, and they are absolutely fabulous phones. They are so nice. Very, very, very well made. Um, dare I say, better made than the um, UK equivalent of the 746 or even the 706. You know, look at, look at this unit here. It's all compact, bolted into place. You know, it's just fantastic, absolutely brilliant. So, let's have a look at what we've got. Uh, just have a quick, quick inspection. The dial plate does have some slight damage here. Um, and so I will probably replace that. I do have spares, so um, that will probably be replaced. Um, as you can see, it's just got a just sort of a little little crack there. I mean, you could you could get away with it, no problems. I mean, it's not. This isn't a phone that's going to be mint perfect when it's done. It's going to be a beautiful phone to use, um, and it's going to look lovely. But it's not going to be perfect, and um, I'm not trying to suggest it will be. But for anyone who loves old vintage things, it's going to be absolutely perfect. In fact, a lot of people would prefer it totally original um, and me not swap things out but um, the way things are I tend to swap things out for myself I wouldn't but um, you know pe people these days are quite fussy um, on things even things that don't really matter but um, anyway so I shall probably swap that out I shall leave you for, for a few minutes and come back while I um, clean and polish all of this stuff and then start the job of putting it back together and wiring it up. Okay, and by the magic of YouTube, here we are back. Um, uh, I've actually machine polished them, but um, there was no need I do it because I'm a business and I'm trying to make money, so I have to do it a bit quicker. But you could do this quite easily by hand with some um, oh, what would it be? Like Brasso or something like that would be perfect. Um, also, I have to be extremely careful when polishing these because they're painted and um, polishing with a buffing wheel, unless you've had about 30 years experience, is not going to end well. Anyway. So here we go. Um, it's just time to start putting it back together again. I actually managed to source some electronic microphones many, many years ago from America. Um, and they're absolutely fantastic. Um, and they were obviously designed for this particular model because you can see they're a direct replacement. Very, very nice indeed and work absolutely beautifully. Um, also, it does mean that they're a direct replacement. So you've got your original cap and you just pop that in. That's the original. So you pop that into position. You don't have to do any modifications at all. I do have another one. Um, I also had this model, which was um, obviously made for the same telephone as well. This one has been modified to 
to my specifications to match the um, 21A GPO models, but uh, absolutely superb again. So either one is perfect for for the for this, and both are. You can both buy it. You can buy these on my website, no problems at all. Okay. Um, also, um, I make my own cables, uh, lining cables. Um, I haven't got these on the website at the moment, but if anyone wants me to, I can put them on and they'll be five pounds each. Um, so these are lovely little things. They're, they're the same spec as the GPO grey models for the 746 and the uh, 706 after refurbishment. Okay, so the thing to note about these ones is, let me just get a, a little brush and I'll just brush this out a sec. Yeah, the thing to note about these telephones is if you if you don't know um, what you're doing here, you could make a mistake quite easily because most people would think that uh, you would um, wire it up L1 to white and L2 to red. Um, but on these, it's the other way around. Don't ask me why, um, but that is, that is just the case. And uh, I expect many, many people have made a mistake and never been able to make them ring. But anyway, so um, basically um, they're, they're marked on the block here. So this is L2 and this is L1. So basically if you connect them up the opposite way around to how you would normally on a phone. Um, I'll do this now. So just pop, pop this through the existing holder. It says, will it go in? Or is it uh, too tight a fit? Let's have a look. Might have to take this off. Just locate that back underneath the um, the bell bracket fixing screw. Okay. Now what I do is I tend to get a little tie grip um, cable tie here, and I pop that through the little hole that was initially, as you saw me take it off for a special clip that was initially originally used um, but we won't be using that anymore so this does the same job no trouble at all so we just nip that up now find, find the clippers clip the little tab off and then as I said this is marked L2 normally on any other telephone it would be the other way around but this is white goes to to l2 we'll tap that round there away from the bell because if they touch the bells it will just deaden the deaden the sound um, and the blue one will go i'll get me big screwdriver because i nearly snapped it off as i told you before And then red goes here. Again, make sure the wiring doesn't touch these bells just because it makes them go dead and uh, spoils the sound. So just make sure that that's nicked up as well. Okay, now we're ready to start putting our cleaned cord back on. As you can see, uh, it's come up really nice. Um, I won't lie and say it was easy. It takes a lot of scrubbing, a lot of scrubbing, cleaning, 
um, and then I actually uh, rebind it and everything. Now then, um, here we go. So it's still got the original clip on there. I will use that just to locate it. So you nip that through to the location and then I get a pair of pliers and hopefully that won't snap because it's been bent. It was really one use only and hopefully it won't snap off. Good. And then I will locate that also by through the base, uh, which is a double security. If that if that um, original one does snap off, this will hold it quite nicely. You don't really need the original one, but uh, if it's there, I'll put it back on. Give that a good nip. Okay, so it's coming together quite nicely now, as you can see. So what we'll do now is um, start putting it back together. So let's um, make sure everything's nice. These are beautiful. They just, I mean, this has probably been sitting in a shed or a garage for Wolf. It's been sitting in my father's garage and then my garage for at least um, 15 years. Um, and pro probably a shed before that for another five or ten years. Uh, and then when it came over from Canada, it was probably sitting outside or something for, for a number of years. So, you know, they're blooming good. They're pretty bulletproof things, these phones. And... I don't know about you guys, but I am all for keeping things out of landfill. I just can't stand to think of anything that's perfectly usable being spoilt and uh, thrown away. Makes no sense to me at all. I mean, look at the amount of work and effort and energy that these have taken to, to manufacture. Crazy. OK, to locate this back on, you just put it to the second position, the number nine, and it locates, and then you twist, hear a click, it's clicked in. Okay. I might give that a little bit of an oil, just to see if I can free it. It's, it's working perfectly, but I will give it a little, little touch of oil. Right, all you guys screaming in the, uh, or gang girls, screaming in the um, comments, why are you using 3-in-1? It's ridiculous, you know, um, and all that old caper. I've been doing it for 30 years, never had a problem. So, you know, if you don't want to use it, don't use it. But don't be telling me what I should and shouldn't be using on these things because um, I have been doing it for a long time. And... Uh, I don't have an issue, so there you go. Right. That sounds beautiful. Okay. Let's pop the polished finger stop back in position now these dials do have a tendency to start wobbling around a bit but they still function perfectly now this one isn't wobbling around this one's really nice but but they are sometimes a bit wobbly but they're fine you know there's nothing to worry about they've been doing it for, for years and years um, that label's a little bit out of straight now shall i take that off and straighten it up um yes <laughs> mm. 
Now then it was, uh, I've got to go that way slightly, haven't I? If I am correct. Beautiful! Bang on. Right, okay. So that's all done. Now then, should we get the uh, handset sorted out? Why not? Okay, that's simple enough. We just uh, thread this all through. Now I'm really hoping some of you guys will find one of these at a boot fair or something and have the uh, have the ability now to, to clean it up and do it yourself. Or buy one of mine <clears throat> that I've done. Um, they're, they're, they're not expensive. I mean, I charge £79 for these um, done like I've done here. They're not going to be perfect. They're done, done to this sort of standard. Um, but at this price point, there's just no, no money in it to, to uh, spend hours and hours on them. Um, but they're a beautiful phone and uh, it will save you doing it. But I mean, if you want to do it yourself, then uh, I would recommend finding some. Or I might be able to uh, supply one that I've tested to make sure that it's all okay at um, a, a price that you can actually do it yourself at. Probably, I would say about, um, I don't know, 45 pounds or something. And then you can do it yourself. The one thing I would say is I just can't get involved in hundreds of questions about it because it just doesn't make it, you know, if I sell something, I can't spend hours and hours on a phone trying to sort out things that, that you know, you've taken the gamble to do it yourself. Stupid, isn't it? Done that wrong. Okay, so we've got the earpiece to go in there. And you can see that these are guided. So you it doesn't really matter, but um, you've got the, uh, the connection goes between these two little plastic pieces. It wouldn't matter if you didn't put them in, but that's what they're there for, so might as well do it properly. Okay, so there you go. That goes in there like that. This is um, shaped so as it presses on that and holds it into position. So just make sure you don't cross the thread these when you're putting them on. If it does, just wind it back until it clicks and then go, go again. Okay, right. Now, if you if you look at these, I'm just going to show you something in a minute. Let's uh, just screw this this up. It doesn't matter which way way round you put any of these connections. It doesn't matter a monkey's. So uh, don't get all tied up about worrying about it. Now then, have I lost the little piece? for this uh, probably oh there it is okie dokie right so um, this locates into that position there now I can't remember which way around that goes but I'm guessing that has to locate that so it doesn't pull through. So you want to put that into a nice position there and then locate it in that little slot in the handset. 
in the handset cord and that will stop it pulling through. Then locate that onto it to stop it pulling out. Um, and then you put your new electronic super duper microphone in there and just make sure that make sure that I'm all located correctly. Possibly that way around. Okay. Get on your varmint. located the little notch there that locates into the handset i'll be honest with you i usually use my own microphones these ones that's why i'm having a little bit of difficulty but I, these are beautiful just as a as a swap over direct swap as you can see the, these ones have the lug as well that locates in one go Right, so now we are up to a testing point. So I'm just going to get my testing in. Turn on. Okay. We have nothing in the receiver. Ah, oh, now then, schoolboy mistake. Obviously, I haven't connected the uh, handset up, have I, idiot boy? Just goes to show we all can make mistakes so here we go um, the red and the white go in the far connection and then the black one goes in this next one in or the middle one and then there's two whites. It doesn't matter which way around you get them. I mean, either white will go in either position. So don't get all stressed about have you put it in the right place. It really doesn't matter a monkey's. Okay. So there we go. Let's hope I've got it right this time. Okay, I've got dial tone and I've got uh, blow on the uh, microphone. So let's give it a ring. Now these sound beautiful, so wait for this. Okay, I'm going to have to adjust that a bit because it's not ringing as I would like. Let's just see whether the... had to move that bell because it's on a, it's on a, like a cam system so it should now hit nicely on that okay 
So let's um, put it all back together. When you're doing this, make sure you don't trap the wires in while you're screwing it up. Before you screw it up, make sure nothing is being trapped. Okay, now then I haven't put the um, the ring back in there. I mean, sometimes you can or you can't. It depends how you feel. Um, actually, on this particular one, because sometimes they lift forward a bit better than this, I will pop that back into position and see whether that's um, an improvement. <laughs> Okay, so this is the little ring, as I say, don't need to, doesn't really matter, but it was there when it was manufactured, so maybe they thought there was a good reason for it, so I shall pop it back. Don't go mad with these screws, they don't need to be, you know, torque, torque tightened, they just need to be enough so they don't, see now that's actually holding, holding it away, I'm not, I might give that, I might not put that back in and I'll twist, I'm going to move that so as it's in a better position. Every phone is different, by the way. You know, one phone when you do it will be completely different in the way that it goes together. Um, minor things like this. So I've noticed that this is over to one side slightly. So I'm going to try and move it. I think I'll leave that actually like that. Sometimes you put those back in, sometimes you don't. And sometimes these are right up tight, so that's protruding quite significantly. Um, I'll show you, here's another one. Here's one I did earlier. See that? Protruding really far out. Don't know why, some do, some don't. They're all different. This particular one isn't, and I don't think it benefits from having that location plug in there or ring um, I don't think it's of any benefit so I'm not going to put it in in this one Okay, so that looks actually rather nice. I'm quite pleased with that one. Um, it's uh, It's got a bit of fading on that part. The paintwork is actually really nice. It's not chipped or scratched. Um, as you saw, the ear cap has got some 
blue coming through. Where is it? I can't even see it. Oh yeah, a little bit of blue coming through um, where it was painted. But um, all the other parts have been painted. It's probably the other parts have been painted with the onto the original colour. So even if it was chipped, you probably wouldn't see it. But for some reason, they used a, a lovely genuine blue one for that one but anyway okay well so that's that little project done um i hope you enjoyed it i will be testing it on the line and making sure everything's okay just going to make sure this dial is lined up as good as it can be so as i can see that that's not quite lined up so um, I think I might have a little faff with that. But um, anyway, these are little niggles that you have to sort out as you go along. I'm going to be sorting that out now um, and uh, end the video. Um, what I would say is um, I'm not monetized or anything and uh, I would like to try to get up there. So if you could subscribe, that'd be fantastic. Um, any comments I'll try and answer um, so I'll see you soon okay uh, I have actually done a bit of tweaking and um, the dial is now straight and is correct um, the little pin that locates into that little hole we were talking about earlier had bent so I bent it into the right position and that was fine. Also, I fitted a 3.3K resistor to the blue line um, to give it so it doesn't hog the line. Um, it would work without it, but it will tend to hog the line. And also, if you're using an ATA, it will use it will provide less power. And so this will enable it to work much better. Um, what else was I going to mention? Oh yeah, I've also um, tweaked the the um, ringer, so it now rings really beautifully now. Um, as you can hear, it really, really sounds beautiful. They're such a nice ring. Anyway, so that finalises everything. Thank you very much for watching. Speak to you or see you next time. Thank you.